in deep learning we often encounter function of functions and uh, we need to take uh, gradients and uh, to update the parameters right so using back propagation we can easily find gradients of such complicated function now let's start let's say we have this function j is a function of x y and z and x y and z itself is a function of other parameters like x is a function f1 the s t so here s and t are other parameters other variables so we have y as f2 s t some other function of s and t and z is some other function f3 of s and t and also let's consider that s and t again depends on some other parameters some other variables and these are maybe these are known as the input variables so we have s is a function f4 of let's say we have the parameters a b and c and t is function f5 of a b and c so we are using f1 f2 f3 f4 and f5 and also f differently in order to indicate that all these functions may be different so j is a complicated function of a b and c so in order to find gradient and by the way gradient vector we have already studied about it like the gradient vector del j is equal to del j over del a del j over del b and del j over del c this is how we define the gradient vector and uh, often we need to find this gradient vector in order to update parameters a b and c <clears throat> fine so let's uh, see how to find uh, this gradient vector in order to do that we will start making a graph uh, sometimes in deep learning it is known as computation graph so we have this graph the input variables here as a b and c and uh, <clears throat> then uh, uh, s and t depend on a b and c and then we have x y and z x y z depend on s and t and then finally we have the function g the this uh, output function g which depends on x y and z so whenever we make some changes in a b or c j is going to change accordingly so that's why we need to update these parameters right so here i am considering this as a node this is how we construct the computation graph s t x y z and z we have and now since s and t depend on a b and c so we have this arrow s depend on a b and c and similarly t also depends on a b and c likewise x depends on s and t y depends again on s and t c depends on s and t and finally x depend j depends on x y and z so this is the computation graph we have and <clears throat> from this computation graph we can find del j over del a let's see how we are going to find it out using back propagation so now from a to z since a sense so i am considering a i am focusing on a so we need to find out how many such paths are there from a to j so we can see if we consider node s will have path 1 covering x y and z x y z so we have this path s a s y z a s z z we have three paths corresponding to s covering x y and z from a to j and similarly using this t node from a to j again we will have three paths corresponding to t covering x y and z 
so this path and this path and this path so all in all we have six paths so the change the maybe the increment of a will propagate through all the six paths so that's why we will add up the gradients right so basically number of paths here number of paths in computation graph is indicating the number of terms of the gradients to be added up so here number of terms to be added up and the number of nodes tells us about number of gradients to be multiplied while back propagating so number of terms to be multiplied so let's see how we are back propagating and finding out the gradient and then multiplying it and finally adding them up so here if we consider this path this path a here i'm writing a s x and z if we consider this path so if we back propagate from j to x it will give us the gradient del j over del x and back propagating from x to s will have the gradient del x over del s because here x is the output variable for s this is the dependent one and s is the independent variable so up up to the node s we have these two gradients so we, what we will do is to multiply these two gradients and then when we back propagate from s to a we will have del s over del a this partial derivative so up to s we have the product del x over del s and del j over del x so when we back propagate from s to a what we will do is to multiply this del s over del a with already multiplied del x over del s and del j over del x so what we are doing in back propagation is cumulatively multiplying while encountering any node so here del j over del a through path this path a s x j can be written as del j over del x times del x over del s times del s over del a multiplication of these gradients that's why i said that number of nodes decides the number of terms to be multiplied here four nodes are there so three terms to be multiplied three partial derivatives to be multiplied so this is del j over del a corresponding to path one so i told you like the change will propagate through all the paths all the six paths so we have six paths so if we look for another path we will have this path a s a s y j so corresponding to this path similarly we can back propagate from j to y it will give us del j over del y and uh, from y to s will have del y over del s and from s to a we already have del s over del a so multiplying these three terms here through path a s y j we have del j over del y times <coughs> del y over del s times del s over del a plus similarly we have this another path uh, including z we have del j over del z times del <coughs> del z over del s times del s over del a so these three paths are corresponding to s similarly we have another three paths corresponding to t which will be del j over del again del j over del x i am considering this path j x t a so del j over del x times del x over del t times again back propagating 
from T to A here will have del T over del A del T over del A and similarly for other paths like uh, A to T to Y to Z we have del J over del Y times del Y over del T del Y over del T back propagating from Y to T and then T to A we have del T over del A and finally the last one let me write it down uh, this one is the last one that is del j over del z times del z over del t times this path j z t a times del t over del a so all in all we have the six terms all adding them up why we are adding them up <clears throat> just because we have the six paths and the changes are propagated through all the six paths if you make any change in a j is changed accordingly all through six paths so that's why we had added them up finally we have this term calculated similarly we can find out del j over del b and del j over del c in the similar fashion so it would be great really it would be great if you try it out yourself and uh, do comment in the below what equation are you getting Hope you understand it. Thank you very much.